Hi everybody, this is Reese Barber from Audiology Associates. Thank you very much for watching the video today. We thought we'd put on an explanation video for perforated eardrums because we had so many comments asking very similar questions uh, for the video we put on earlier today which showed a perforation. We thought it would be easier to just do an explanation video which should answer most of your questions because a few people had a few different queries. So the first thing we'll do is show you the difference between healthy and perforated eardrums. Now, when we do an examination, so when we do some otoscopy looking in the ears, what we're looking for is a few key features on the eardrum. So if we look at the healthy eardrum here, first of all, the first thing we're going to look for is can we see um, some smooth, healthy skin? Does it look the right colour? Is it smooth, pearlescent, shiny, which is exactly what this is here? And then we're going to look for some other key features. So we're going to look for the hammer bone, which is this section here, just sitting behind the eardrum, just protruding through ever so slightly. And we're also going to be looking for, this is what we call a light reflex. Now, in most cases, um, the light reflex will normally be what they call a cone of light, which will be more this kind of shape. So this is the sort of reflection you get back, or that's the shape of the reflection. If the eardrum isn't sitting quite in its normal position, then what you'll get then is this more diffuse uh, looking sort of light reflex. So basically, this is the light from, from in our case, the endoscope that was shining, in, shining back at us. Now, what we don't want to see is what we can see here on the right-hand side, which is a large hole here in the centre. So you can see we're missing some of those key features. So the first thing is the hammer bone should be running in this direction here. So we can't see that protruding through there. The skin of the eardrum uh, looks quite thickened and toughened up, so not the, the um, translucent kind of skin we can see here. And we've also got a great big hole right in the middle of the, uh, the eardrum there. Now, what you can see through this hole is actually the middle ear space back here. So this is where the three little bones of the middle ear are found in this section. It looks a little bit shiny, so a little bit wet in there, but that's quite normal for the middle ear space. Now, people are asking, why do we get perforations? What are the most common causes? How does this happen? Um, is it painful? That was another question we were getting asked a lot. So the main causes of things that perforations to the eardrums are usually trauma or infection. So by trauma, I mean someone's popped something into their ear, gone in a bit too far and actually punctured the eardrum. And by infection, you can get infections in the outer ear, which is from the eardrum out. And you can also get infections of the middle ear space, which is back here. So sometimes if you get infections in the middle ear space, what happens is the infection builds and builds and builds, puts lots of pressure on the eardrum, and eventually the eardrum will burst to release that pressure. Um, you can get uh, perforations from uh, things like if you went scuba diving, so big pressure changes or big air pressure changes. Some people get it when flying, but that's more rare. It's usually followed by some other conditions as well. Um, so those are the main kind of issues as to why you get a perforation. Is it painful? Ooh, it, some people don't realise they've had a perforation because if you were talking about, say, a middle ear infection, the pressure building behind the eardrum can be really uncomfortable anyway. So when the perforation happens, when the eardrum releases that um, infection and releases the pressure, then people find that a relief. So they may not necessarily know they've got a perforation to the eardrum. Um, obviously, if you've had trauma, if you've, if you've pushed something in there, um, then obviously you're going to know because it's going to be really uncomfortable. As far as whether uh, perforations are uncomfortable generally, no, they're not. Unless they're causing problems with infection or they're discharging all the time, in which case you might get a little bit of itching, um, then you probably wouldn't notice. It wouldn't be a painful experience to have a perforation. Um, people have asked, would this reduce hearing? Yes, it would. Um, most perforations, if they're large enough, will have an impact on hearing, so it will reduce the hearing slightly. If it's a very small perforation, what they call a pinhole perforation, so much, much smaller, you'd be looking at something maybe kind of, you know, a teeny one about this kind of size, um, then no, your chances are it wouldn't really affect the hearing that much. Treatment. Lots of people asking, well, what do you do with perforations? The simple answer is, Leave them well alone in the most cases because the eardrum is very clever. It will try to repair itself. So what normally happens is the skin grows into the space from the hole. So it just starts to close the gap up. And in most cases, that does it really effectively. Now, if you've got quite a large perforation, this is quite large, this one. It's not subtotal, which means it's not, not, not the majority of the eardrum's gone. So, but it is a pretty large eardrum. What you may find is as the skin starts to grow into the centre, it can't support itself, so it collapses down. So you always end up with another hole, which then grows back out to the space it is there. So some of these um, perforations 
won't heal up. Uh, in that case then, if the perforation is well behaved and it's not uh, being uh, causing any infections or not causing tremendous amount of hearing loss, the consultant will probably leave it well alone. If it's causing lots of problems like infection or if there is quite a considerable hearing loss there, then what they can do is rebuild the eardrum, which is what they call a tympanoplasty. So what they're doing effectively is patching over this and sealing it over. But then the skin is never as thin as a normal eardrum skin and you will sometimes get still get a residual hearing loss with that as well. So the majority of times we just leave these well alone and don't play around with them. You would need to keep this ear nice and dry because any water getting into um, that ear canal would also end up in the middle ear space which is in here. Now this is a perfect breeding ground for infection because it's now open. Any water, any bacteria getting in there is going to multiply. You can get infections, you get a lot of weeping from the ear, a lot of itching in the ear, those kind of things coming through. Now interestingly what happened with our patient that you saw in the video earlier was instead of the skin growing into the centre, it had started growing away from the eardrum and down into the canal, which is here. So what we end up with then is a long tube, like this, of skin. And what we did was we removed that to try and encourage this skin then to try and do its normal process, which is to grow back into the centre like that. Now we can't promise that that's going to happen, we just don't know, um, but hopefully that will happen for this gentleman and that will start to uh, to go through and, and patch itself back up again. Um, oh, I don't think there was anything else anyone asked really, but yeah lots of lots of questions came out there. If I've missed a question I apologise, I did try and give a general overview, um, but obviously if you, uh, if you have any more questions then just pop them into the comments. If you enjoyed this kind of video uh, and you enjoyed the fact that we do these kind of explanation videos, we like to feed back to you guys as much as we possibly can and we love getting your feedback as well. So um, as always, if you liked it, then please like, share. If you haven't subscribed already, if you're new to the channel, this is one of the first videos you've watched, click the subscribe button, ring the bell above the top and every time we do a new video, you'll get an alert from us. New videos go on every Tuesday and every Friday. If you don't follow us already on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, they're all at the bottom there as well. So um, by all means, drop along to those, have a quick look and, uh, and subscribe, like, whatever you want to do. Okay then guys, I hope that's answered most of your questions for you. Have a great evening and as always, take care.